welcome to my kitchen. Um, we're making pizza for dinner tonight, so I thought while I'm getting everything organized, I might as well invite you into my kitchen and uh, show you my not-so-secret recipe for the easiest and best pizza sauce ever. So come on into my kitchen and I'm gonna share with you. Thanks for joining me. Okay, Fab Foodies, welcome. So, uh, like I said in my, my intro, um, this is our not-so-secret best pizza sauce ever recipe and it's gonna blow your mind how easy it is to make so all you need is a can of tomatoes whether they're crushed diced chopped whole whatever um, this one is a can of whole tomatoes actually they're peeled and stewed they're peeled and stewed um, and that's it they're all I can find right now because Sometimes uh, these days it's difficult to find certain things in the store. Blender is definitely one of my secret weapons when making sauces. And then what we're gonna add, of course, classic marinara. This one is your go-to. Like if you're making any kind of red sauce, you wanna use this one. It's a blend of herbs like basil, garlic, onion, bell pepper. It's a, it's a pretty good, starting place. I'm going to throw in a tablespoon of that one and that's pretty much all that's left in the jar so that's why I just dumped it in. I'm going to throw in um, a teaspoon and a half of extra minced garlic because I love minced garlic. This one's a pantry staple. It literally is um, one jar equals 67 garlic cloves. Um, half a teaspoon equals one clove basically so this is like if you don't have garlic in your pantry or in your your um, cold room, this is your go-to. You don't have to chop pinch or garlic anymore. So a teaspoon and a half of extra minced garlic. And then, this one is one of my absolute favorite summer products and it is on its way back starting on the 1st of May. This one will be available again and I love adding this one to pizza sauce because it does have um, chilies as, re as well as um, herbs like oregano. And uh, it gives you that extra little, the chilies give it a little zip and um, the, other, the other herbs just give it really, really bold flavor. So I'm gonna throw in a tablespoon of that one as well. Then my last one is our pesto mix. Now this one I love. So like all of Epicure's products, um, it's nut free, right? Our entire facility is a nut free, peanut and tree nut free facility. And most pesto comes with um, pine nuts in it. And there is instructions on the side if you want to make a classic pesto sauce with pine nuts, you can. Um, but we have allergies in this house, so this is the first pesto that everyone could eat in our house. My youngest is allergic to peanuts, but my oldest is allergic to tree nuts, including pine nuts. The littlest one, though, was also allergic to dairy till she was two, and so most pesto also has cheese in it. This one has neither. Um, you add those things as you make them. So what you get as the base here is just a really herby, basily, garlicky deliciousness. And so I'm gonna add half a tablespoon of this to our sauce as well, simply because it just gives, I mean, I wish you could smell vision here. It, this is amazing. I love our pesto mix. And that's it. We're gonna put the lid on. It's gonna get noisy for a second. And we're just gonna pulverize. secret ingredient it's not so secret so I'm gonna move move some stuff okay so welcome back this is my uh, next not so secret ingredient this is our um, multi-purpose steamer so this is food grade silicone no plastic no phthalates no nothing 
Um, it is oven safe, microwave safe, dishwasher safe, and this is my secret weapon for um, getting things ready quick. I know if you've been following along, you've seen me use this before. I make pasta in here, I make other sauces in here, I make quinoa and millet and rice and other grains. You can do a whole chicken, like a whole roast chicken, like three pound chicken in here in the microwave and it comes out juicy and absolutely delicious. But that's not what we're doing today. Today, we're using this bad boy to make our sauce. Now, I'm gonna throw in our crushed tomatoes and seasonings that we just blasted in the blender. And honestly, the blender makes it just a really nice smooth sauce. That's why I, I love this. And I mean, really, if you just have a whole bunch of garden tomatoes or all you can find in the store right now is canned whole tomatoes, the blender becomes your best friend because then you can turn whole tomatoes into just about anything that you want. So we're gonna put all of that in there and then just give it a little stir. This is our saute spoon, I love this thing. It's like a spatula and a spoon all in one. And then we're gonna pop the lid on. So as you can see here, the handles are on the sides here. Um, you wanna put the lid on with the steam holes facing the opposite direction to the handles so that when, you, when it's hot, when you're done cooking with it and you're grabbing the handles, the steam isn't gonna blow on your hands. Um, and then we are gonna put this into the microwave for about 10 minutes. Okay, so depending on how long it's been in the microwave, you might want to use oven mitts, but I'm okay uh, just now. It's only been the 10 minutes. Now this is this 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 is the reveal. Don't tell Nona uh, because I'm just gonna let a little bit of steam off and then open it up. You can have rich, herby, delicious marinara sauce in 10 minutes in the microwave. Don't tell Nona. She might not be happy to hear that. <laughs> now, while this is in the microwave cooking, um, it's a great time to get your, your dough ready, your crusts ready, um, and then we are going to top our pizzas. So uh, hang in there. Give me a second and come and watch. with your dough your trays are ready um, I love these quarter sheet pans because two of them will fit side by side inside the oven um, I've lightly oiled them so that the dough doesn't stick uh, and we are ready to go so I do recommend when you're working with um, homemade dough this is our family's favorite sourdough um, dough and I will definitely share the recipe in the comments um, that you give it about 10 minutes of pre-bake before you add toppings. And so I do recommend that you poke it a couple times before you stick it in the oven, just so that it doesn't end up all bubbly. I mean, I know my kids love a bubbled crust, um, but giving it a good couple of pokes just helps so that it isn't just one giant bubble when you're ready. And then we are going to put it in a 425 oven for 10 minutes and like I said they stick nicely side by side in there so just pop them in and 
All right, guys, we're uh, getting close to assembling our pizzas here, so I thought I would share a couple of our um, favorite toppings with you and some of my tricks for prepping them. So um, this bad boy is one of my favorites for prepping pizza toppings. This is our uh, four-in-one mandolin. The blade actually comes out and you can swap it in and out. So this is the three and a half millimeter slice. There's actually um, three other blades that go in here. One is a one and a half millimeter slice and then I have um, a micro julienne and a chop blade that you can pop in there and make all kinds of different shapes and sizes. So I love this one for stuff like toppings because you can do evenly sliced thin sliced mushrooms because we all know that mushrooms are awesome on a pizza but they cook so much nicer when they're thin. Um, I also love it for slicing up stuff like your peppers. Again, uniform thin slices cook up nicely so that you don't have a soggy wet spot in the middle of your pizza <laughs> um, because all of your toppings have sliced evenly and they cook evenly because of it. Um, this does come with a guard and as you can see here I'm getting close to the end uh, I would recommend using the guard at the end so that you don't slice your fingers off um, I've also used the mandolin to micro slice some red onion which we are caramelizing here in the pan with um, the roasted garlic aioli so that just gives you a little extra super garlic flavor on the onions when you caramelize it with that. And as you can see, it's one of our favorites. It's almost empty. Um, we've sliced up some of our favorite meats. So I used, I used this knife. Um, this is our ceramic chef knife. It's awesome. So we've got some of our favorite meats sliced up there. We've got some crispy pancetta ready to go. Uh, so the next step is actually preparing the dough. So uh, once I have our dough ready, you can come back and we will assemble a pizza. Okay, we are ready to dress our pizza. So we have our marinara sauce that we made in the steamer while we were getting our dough ready. So we're just gonna spread that on there. Crusts are hot, so you may wanna use a mitt just to hold the pan there. So depends on how saucy you like it. Get your sauce on and ready. And so I shared a couple of secret ingredients when we were getting the sauce ready. The next not so secret ingredient to making the best pizza is the pizza seasoning. So we're just gonna sprinkle some of that right onto the sauce. And this is what gets you the pizzeria pizza flavor. It's um, delicious and it gives you that extra garlicky chili kick. And then, dress your pizza with all your favorite toppings. Okay, our pizzas are decorated and they are ready. So they are going in the oven. 
And this is why I love the quarter sheet pants. Two side by side, right in the oven. And we are gonna let them bake for about 15 minutes and they will be ready to rock. There are our finished products. Delicious. Ready to go.